interviewed by Marilyn Manson at this lunch, but this is during the post-production of Mechanical Animals. So you never really play on the Mechanical Animals record, you do the tour. That's correct. I got home off tour from Europe and I was so tired, I remember him. We went to, uh, we went to a restaurant and he pretty much gave me the name there. I didn't even play guitar for him, you know? So he gave me the name John Five and uh, he said, this is what we're gonna do and we're doing this new album right now and I was such a fan, you know, I knew, I didn't want to say all this, but I knew everything he was saying already because I was such a fan. And uh, he brought me down to the studio, you know, after the lunch, you know, after I said, yeah, I'll do it and stuff like that. And, um, you know, went down to the studio and he showed me the album cover of Mechanical Animals and played me the songs. And they, they were mixing the album and they said, we want you to re-record the guitars on this album. And I was like, no problem. You know, I'll, I'll do it and it'll be great because I learned everything. You know, he, they would give me demos to start learning for the tour. And I learned everything so well. They were like, we want you to re-record -re these guitars. But they were just in the final mixing stages and I think they had a, uh, a release date and a deadline that they had to, you know, do. And that's what they did. And my picture is inside the album now, and Manson took that picture of me. So it's pretty uh, funny that you know people don't really know that, but it's um, you know then it was a roller coaster. I think the first gig, the first time I was ever on stage with Manson, other than being in rehearsal, was the MTV Video Music Awards, and it was um, you know because I didn't, I had no idea what it was going to be like being on stage with them, and so. Here we are, you know, on on stage, MTV Video Music Awards, and this is funny. I think you can find this on YouTube. I at the end of the song, a dope show. I take my guitar and I throw it in the crowd, and you know, someone gets it and stuff. And then it ended up on MTV News the next day. You know, some lucky fan got you know guitars, John Five's guitar, and uh, you know, it was cool. It was great. My sister came with me to the uh, to the MTV Music Awards, and she has this. Uh, collage of her with, you know, Lenny Kravitz yeah. and, you know, No Doubt and Steven Tyler and, you know, you know, I think Rob Zombie, you know, I remember Rob coming up with those, you know, in that, in the Munsters car yeah. with all the devil girls. I was like, that is so rad. <laughs> God, I'd love to be in his band. That's so cool. But um, I remember you know, watching this and going, God, this is so cool, because now the MTV Music Awards, are, it's so different. Mm -hmm. You know, we're lucky, we're lucky we're getting uh, a rock band on there. And it used to be all rock, you know, thank God for the Foo Fighters being up there. Yeah. You know, it's like, you know, I get so excited for them to come up on stage, you know, and we don't have that much rock on the MTV Video Music Awards, but, you know, back then, boy, it was, it was awesome. It was crazy. And that was the year that Rose McGowan wore the backless dress. That's right. Or backless and frontless. Yeah. yeah. Backless and frontless. It was, it was, um, yeah, it was right in back of her. <laughs> that was so cool. It was awesome. Yeah. You know? Those were good times, man. Those were great times. You know, those were good times. It was, uh, I remember riding in the limo and I was like, so the car's going this way, so Manson and Rose are sitting this way, so, like, I kept on, like, was like this, like, to Rose, you know? <laughs> you guys start a tour called the Rock is Dead Tour, and, yes. and the hole is opening for you. Yes. Now, uh, tell me about the first two nights of the tour. The, uh, uh, essentially, what I want to know about is the second night where Marilyn Manson falls and breaks his leg, or something, to, because I was there. Was it at the Forum? Yes, it was. Okay, so here's the thing. I think Manson hurt his ankle earlier if I if I recall correctly he hurt his ankle earlier at a f other show and we are playing the form and I'm like oh my god I'm so excited to play the form kiss alive too you know just this massive you know thing in my in my memory of the LA forum and we're, we're there we're, we're we're doing it and it's like all my friends and Everybody are in the front row. I'm like, this is the greatest moment of my life. And I remember just before the show, a doctor was looking at his ankle. 
and he said, now listen, you have to, you know, just don't jump around, don't do anything, you know, just take it easy. And, and they were saying that to Manson. And so I was like, this is great, this is great. I remember seeing all my friends right in the front. I don't know how they got so close. And I remember Manson, he got up on this side fill. Ugh, this is so funny, I haven't told this story, I don't think ever. He got up on the side fill and he was gonna jump. And I got in front of him so he wouldn't jump. And he was like, move, move. And I was like, no, 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 I'm not moving. You're gonna, you know, mess up your leg. And I remember like, while we were playing, I was like in his way and he jumped and that was it. And that was it, show's over. I think we played four songs or something and it was, it was awesome. It was awesome. It was a great, great, great show. And then also I wanted to ask you, how did you guys deal with the impact of the Columbine situation. How did you feel personally about that? Well, we were in the middle of a tour at that time, and, um, you know, I kind of felt, I felt bad for Manson because everyone just, you know, blamed him for, you know, he didn't even do anything, and they didn't really have anything to do with him. But they just needed to point a finger to someone, and he was, you know, so easy to point a finger to, you know? I did it a bunch of times too. It was him, it was him. You know, like it, it could be any situation. Mm -hmm. You know, he was so easy to just blame Manson. You know, he should have had a TV, his own TV show, Blame Manson. <laughs> and uh, you know, it was, it was very unfortunate of the whole situation. It was just a, a terrible, terrible thing that happened. And, uh, but I don't know why they, they uh, blamed him, but they sure did, you know, and it was, it was I felt really bad for him. But I remember us playing um, Colorado, and there were so many helicopters in the sky. We were in an outdoor, like baseball stadium type of thing, and I remember there were so many helicopters in the sky because everyone thought, you know, someone was going to shoot them or something was going to happen. And I remember thinking, "Wow, this is so crazy! How can they have so many helicopters in the sky?" I wasn't even thinking, "Oh, he's going to get shot or anything like that," or but he had so many death threats. But I was thinking to myself, how can they have so many helicopters in the sky? That can't be safe. But it was, it was a mess. It was just a mess. And I felt bad for Manson because he didn't you know, deserve any of that. Did it affect you emotionally? Uh, the only thing that affected me emotionally was you know, for those kids and those parents. Mm -hmm. you know, the, the band, you know, we'll be fine. We cancel shows, but you know, it was, it was about those, those kids and the you know, the families and things like that. That's what, you know, I think struck me the most. A live album comes out from that, that 1999 tour. That okay. live album is from the uh, Mechanical Animals tour. And that album, we were so good as a band. We were just really tight and really good. That album is 100% live. It's completely live. The reason why is we, um, taped all these shows for this live album and I remember going through these these uh, tapes and picking out the best performances and it was just me doing it I would listen to like you know if you know Manson like dropped the mic or you know if blah 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 and I would make all these notes and that's all there's not even overdubs on that thing it's just all live and uh, I'm really proud of that record too I think everybody was just I mean, the band was on fire, yeah. and they were just plain unbelievable. And it was, you know, I, I love that album because it is so live. When you guys go to record Hollywood in the shadow of the Valley of Death, mm -hmm. this is some intensive collaboration because apparently you guys go out to Death Valley, am yep. I correct? Mm -hmm. you're, you're doing some stuff over at Rick Rubin's studio. Yes. Tell me what that, what, what that was like for you and uh, what did you take from that? Well, what it was like for me, uh, you know, I'm a songwriter. I love writing music, and I, I just love writing, you know, music and uh, good songs and things like that. And, but I was coming into a situation where, you know, um, Twiggy wrote, you know, like 99% of the music, and uh, which was great, you know. I was just happy to be there. You know, I was, I really, 
and this is the truth. I was just so happy to be there, to be in in this, uh, in the band and things like that. But uh, you know, me and Manson would hang out, and he would say, "Oh, you know, like, do you have any riffs or blah blah blah?" And and uh, you know, I I would play him stuff, and we started collaborating. But we all collaborated as a band, which was which was great. It was me and Twiggy and Manson and Ginger and Pogo, everybody. We all collaborated as this group, which was awesome. So I remember us getting together in uh, the Houdini house, Rick Rubin's place, and we set up as a band in the, in the living room and we played. Everybody was playing and we were working out ideas. And I remember Ginger, the drummer, saying that's the first time we've ever done anything like that. Apparently, when it first came out, it was panned, but now it's considered one of Marilyn Manson's, Marilyn Manson's highest selling records. Yeah. So that says a lot about it as far as its yeah. longevity. Every record that comes out, people are like, eh, you know, it doesn't matter if, if like, even like, uh, you know, Kiss, when Kiss came out with Destroyer, people were like, oh my God, this is, what happened to my Kiss? You know, what happened to, you know, Cold Gin, and what happened to blah, 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 blah. And, you know, everybody, if they put out a record, you know, everybody will compare it to the other three, but, you know, Destroyer is one of their greatest records ever, mm -hmm. you know? But I remember people, Talking like what? Ha what is? What are these strings on Destroyer? What are? What are these? You know, it doesn't sound like Kiss, and it's their biggest selling record. So I don't. It doesn't matter who you are. Whatever album they put out, you know, there's going to be be people saying, "Oh, this and that and the other thing," and they don't know. These are these are journalists. These aren't like, you know, it's not like Paul McCartney's going. You know, you know, Manson, I don't know, you know, this, I don't know if this is as good as, you know, Mechanical Animals or something like that. These are journalists. They have no idea. You know, they're just reviewing something. It's just their opinion. But, you know, I, it's, a, it's an incredible record. How out of control did it get on those Marilyn Manson tours? Well, it got like, now you're thinking in your head while you're asking this question, <laughs> you're, you're thinking of things that are out of control just times that by like a thousand that's how out of control it was <laughs> oh, really? it was it was beyond out of control it was it was crazy it was like it was the kind of out of control where you wake up the next not even morning but afternoon and I don't drink or do anything you know I, and it's when you wake up myself and go oh man that just can't be right you know that is not good and it was like that every day, every day, every single day. Like, unbelievable, unbelievable.